Hey guys, it's Conrad Bobby Lack here, CEO of Investors Prime Real Estate and best-selling author of Australian Real Estate Investing Made Simple. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is all about credit files. And this is probably one of the most important and most sensitive part of the loan application process. And I'm going to cover today the essential parts you need to be aware of when it comes to your credit file and the credit scoring algorithm, and also the costs involved in getting it fixed, and alternatively, the cost involved in not getting it fixed. Because if you think it's expensive to get your credit file fixed, try paying 1% to 2% above the normal rate for your investment property or your home loan. So it's going to be a very, very interesting short video today. Bit of a personal disclaimer. Obviously, I haven't met you before. I haven't considered your personal circumstances or your risk profile. So today is purely just educational and obviously seek professional advice before you do anything. For those of you who haven't um, heard me speak before, a bit of my background, I wasted four years at Monash University doing a business degree, which consisted of playing pool at the tavern and drinking beer all day and doing assignments with international students. Um, then I nearly did an MBA, more bad advice, but I thought I'd pull the pin on it and start making some money. So I got into funds management, financial planning, and eventually uh, lending. I was a financier for Medfin, private banking for NAB. And now I'm in real estate, really loving the property world. I can tell you now, real estate's been the most exciting part of my whole journey um, and my whole career because it's always changing. There's always things that are happening and property is just such an interesting phenomena. The most important thing about today is, and the reason I'm talking to you is because I'm actually a property investor myself. I'm a multi-millionaire property investor. I've got lots of properties in Melbourne and I'm really not only sourcing properties, I'm speaking to developers, accountants, lawyers, valuers all day long. So I've got my finger on the pulse. I know exactly what's happening in the Melbourne property market. And I want to share this information with you because I know myself, I've made such an effort over the last 10, 15 years to keep my credit file squeaky clean and understanding all the components of your credit file and what makes up your credit score is so essential if you are wanting to build large property portfolios because irrespective of your income or the type of quality of property that you source, your credit file could make the difference between, and your credit score could make the difference between getting the loan and getting rejected from a lender. Now, also, just as I mentioned before, if you want to get a copy of my finance book, you can jump on my website or go to Amazon or any good bookshop, same with the other book. And I want to thank you guys for supporting my book. It's got number one bestseller multiple times now. So very humbling experience. And I want to thank you guys for buying my book and uh, supporting me. Now, you would have seen this before. If you've read any of my books or been to my live events, I talk about the loan assessment criteria. And, I, and I've come up with a number of simple ways to remember the essential components of what it takes to get a loan across the line. And the olive cake, as you can tell, uh, I'm a powerlifter. I love eating cake, especially my wife's cake. She's Italian. She makes a beautiful tiramisu with a whole bottle of Bailey's, uh, which I completely polish off myself every time she makes it. And uh, so, when you think of when you think of your credit file, when you think of lending, just think of cake and and the slice of cake. And slice stands for security, location, income, character, and equity. Security, obviously, we talk about the different types of properties that are available out there. You've got commercial property, residential property, industrial property, office, and there's different LVRs associated with different types of properties and the risks associated with those properties. Location also is very important because postcodes determine the risk profile of properties. And there are blacklisted postcodes in Australia in different towns, which I talk about to avoid those areas completely and never invest there. Avoid them like a teen arena concert because you're not going to make any money out of those areas. Income is obviously the different types of income and how the banks looks at different types of income. Today, people have multiple streams of incomes. You know, the days of just having one job is pretty much over. People have multiple jobs. They have dividends, shares. They have investment properties. So with income, we're talking about how banks assess your income. Character is what we're talking about today. And today what we're talking about specifically is your credit file. Now, if you're going to get a copy of your credit file, all you've got to do is go to aquifax.com.au and you can request a copy of your credit file for free. And it takes a long time to get it and you've got to pay, you've got to, you've got to do a lot of forms or you can pay a little bit of money and I'll talk about in a second what the actual subscription costs are and get a copy emailed to you pretty much, um, you know, within a few days. Your credit score is very important because it will determine ultimately how the banks and lenders look at you. You see, when you're applying for a loan, they don't know who you are. You're just an application. So credit needs to build up a kind of an understanding of the person that you are. And because they're lending you money, 
their objective of a loan is that eventually you're going to pay that money back. So they want to know that you're a responsible human being. And obviously, all they can go by is the limited information that the broker or the banker has submitted to them. So they're trying to build up a kind of a, a reference of who you are. Is this person responsible? Are they going to be paying the loan back on time? What is their experience with other loans and other commitments? So some of the things that I talk about also, especially with younger people, if you haven't got a credit file, if you haven't bought anything before in credit, I, I definitely recommend that you start doing that. You know, even like going to JB Hi-Fi and getting a plasma screen on GE Finance uh, for a $1,000 and then paying it off within the interest-free period, that will create your credit file and you'll create a credit history of you repaying something. So just so you understand, if you have no transactions on your credit file, it's actually very bad because it's really an unknown. They don't know whether you're going to be paying things off. So if you have a small transaction, whether it's a credit card or a couple of things that you've purchased and paid off within within the interest-free period of time, that is better than having nothing on your credit file because then the lender thinks, well, he's bought things and he's paid them off in time, which is good. That gives us kind of some level of confidence that this person's a reliable person that's going to pay off their debts. So definitely as an investor, you have to get a copy of your credit file. In fact, you should be on your credit alert, which, which is what I, what I definitely do myself. Um, I subscribe to the $14.95 per month one where you get 12 reports per year. Anytime anyone touches my credit file, I want to be notified immediately because you can't afford to let this go. This will definitely cost you tens of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, if you look at the opportunity costs of not being able to secure investment properties. So this is the most sensitive part of your lending process. And it's something that you have to definitely monitor like there's no tomorrow. For a basic plan, it's $4.95 per month. You know, you're talking about five bucks a month here, guys. You know, we're talking about 60 bucks per year, tax deductible. It's not even worth considering. Like the cost is nothing. It's the cost of doing business. Um, you know, you can do a $9.95 per month as well, where you get four credit file reports per year and credit alerts. The credit alert is the key thing that you want, which means that anytime anyone touches your credit file, opens it up for the lending of an application, um, you need to be made aware of that situation. In some instances, if it's not you, you need to then action that immediately. And we've got a guest speaker today, Pasha, who's a lawyer, who will talk to you about credit fraud, which is a phenomenon that's been happening a lot in the last 10, 15 years. And it's getting more and more sophisticated. So you have to really be on the ball with this stuff, guys. As investors, you've got to protect your identity and you've got to protect your credit score. Um, in terms of rating, this is an American system. It wasn't really designed in Australia, as you, as you might not be aware of this, but it's an American company originally. And as such, Equifax's whole purpose is to get you guys on direct debits, which is fine and it's cool. What you've got to understand is that the Australian banking system doesn't follow the same credit scoring algorithms that the American banking system follows. We've designed our own independent credit scoring algorithm. So don't mix up the credit score that you're given from Aquifax as the same as the actual credit score that the banks use to work out your serviceability. So NAB, CBA, I used to work for NAB, they have their own credit scoring algorithm completely independent of Aquifax, okay? So we've designed our own rules of what we perceive are uh, ingredients that you need to have in order to qualify for a loan. However, having said that, what's happening with a credit file, especially in the last five, five, six, seven years, is that the information sharing between the banks have, has increased to the point where now where on your credit file, not only does it give you, in the past, it used to be just a loan application, whether you're rejected or accepted, um, now it gives you your repayment history. So banks can see other banks' um, repayment history on loans for up to two years, which means there's more transparency and more information sharing across the field, which means that you've got to be diligent, making sure that you're never in behind with any of your loan repayments or your telco bills. Even to the point, if you don't agree with something, guys, if you don't agree with a direct debit or a bill, pay it and then question it and then sue them. But do not not pay a telco bill, okay? I've seen people say, well, I don't, I'm not going to pay this $500 bill to Telstra because they ripped me off. And then they have a, that impacts their credit score. Where if they paid it and then sued them and got it, then it would have been much better for them because on principle, what they're doing is they're saving $500, but they're going to be paying $10,000 more in interest because their credit file got smashed. So remember, you got to put things into perspective. This is a copy of my credit file report from July 2022. 
I'm just going to show you a couple of snippets. This is an investment loan that I have for one million ten thousand, and you can see there that these ticks represent my repayments um, for that investment loan. So this is how far the banks will go back. They'll go back, in fact. Um, two years to make sure that you've paid your loan. Now, technically speaking, on this loan application, I've just refinanced this property um, to release equity, and um, it's gone up by $800,000 in six years, which is great. So I'm releasing that equity. They only want six-month bank statements, but they'll still look at the repayments on the credit file. Okay, So even though technically for that loan application, they only want six-month bank statements, they'll have a look. So why it's important, even though you, some people say, well, I'm not going to worry about it and I'll fix up my repayments because the banks only look for the last six months. Yes, they do. But if you're borderline on getting the loan application through and it's based on discretion from the credit department and they can see it's all red for the last 12 months and you've only been keeping up repayments in the last 12 months, you could be rejected. Okay, that's how sensitive this information is. This is a $40,000 credit card that I have um, with Westpac. You can see the repayments all ticked. It's on the auto sweep, so I basically repay that credit card before the interest um, period kicks in. But once again, this is the information and the level of transparency that your credit file has, and it, this will impact your borrowing capacity. There's other things like directorships, addresses. So you've got to make sure that all the information on your credit file is correct, that your current address is there that's correct, your current employer is correct, all directorships, it's all there. It all has to be 100% accurate. You can't afford to let this go and just think, oh, I'm not going to worry about it um, and I'll focus on, on other things. This is, guys, this is money in the bank. You know, it's such a simple thing to keep track of and if there are any issues, you can fix them. By the way, here is my credit score, which is 1,014, which is excellent. And by the way, it's 1,014 by design, not by accident. You know, I've, I've been taking great effort to make sure that my credit score is, and my credit file and all the information on my credit file is always 100% up to date and accurate. And that's why I get the best rates and I always get, it's just easy. Lenders love me. And this is what you want to do as well as property investors. So what happens when something goes bad? What happens when I've had people go overseas for 12 months and they're not realizing there was amounts outstanding from different tel from Telstra, from gas companies that were chasing them, calling them, sending letters. Eventually the credit file got hit, the credit score's low, and now they're back from the UK trying to buy properties, but the credit score is so low, they're getting penalized with interest. What do you do then? Who do you turn to if you want to fix your credit file? if you want to make sure that you're getting the best possible interest deal from your mortgage broker. Well, what I've done today is, is I've got a company which is probably the best company in Australia and I've had a lot of brokers talk about this company, how efficient they are and how successful they are in getting clients and turning their credit files around. The company is called Credit Repair Solicitors and I've got Pasha here today um, who's a principal lawyer at uh, CRS. Thank you, Pasha, for being here today and giving up your time. I really appreciate it your time today. And Pasha is going to share the information with you and go through in detail all the services they provide and also some case studies of people who've had credit files who came to them initially as clients with, with credit impairments and then what actions and steps they took to make sure that those credit files were fixed and then what the results were at the end. And also a little bit about the services they provide and what's possible, what's not possible. So thank you for coming in today, Pasha, and I'll hand you over. And uh, guys, enjoy this presentation. I'll be back at the very end just to wrap things up. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad. Pleasure to be here. Uh, today, we want to just keep continue elaborating regarding uh, credit reports. Uh, you did a very well, good job to be able to refine everything and to elaborate. So we're just going to continue unpacking everything with respect to a credit report and to look at, for example, what affects a credit report and what doesn't with respect to the algorithm. Uh, so again, just a bit of a disclaimer here. Uh, yes, I am a lawyer, but at the same time, every situation is different. By all means, we'll provide our information at the end of this presentation. So you want to just touch base with us to run your scenario through with us. More than happy to analyze it upfront and provide you with no obligation assessment. Uh, so a little bit about us. So CRS, Credit Repair Solicitors, uh, we're Australia's largest based legal practice specializing in credit reporting and credit law. Uh, we love what we do and we're holistically dedicated to be able to help you be able to move on with whatever your goals are, whether they be financial or otherwise. A uh, bit of the agenda today with respect to a bit of a breakdown. 
We have uh, credit reporting bureaus. So Conrad did a great job explaining Equifax. So we're going to look at one or two other bureaus as well with respect to that. Uh, credit score versus credit worthiness. Uh, why the both should be treated not necessarily in isolation, but in hand in hand together. We have consumer and commercial reports. So we're going to be looking at what makes up a commercial report and why sometimes this credit scoring might be a little bit different. Uh, we'll share a couple of tips uh, for the investors out there uh, to keep on not only on top of their credit report, but also some things to um, make sure that doesn't impact their report adversely. Uh, company reports, how to order them. A um, little bit about credit worthiness, a little bit about some before and after scenarios about clients that we've helped in the past. So it gives you a great indication about how much of an impact not having a good credit report can have on one. Um, fraud, unfortunately, is a very large thing these days happening, so we'll unpack that a bit more. Um, and all the way through, it's about, I guess, how to interpret a credit report. That's what we hope that you'll get out of today's uh, presentation. And at the same time, going into comprehensive credit reporting, so uh, late repayment history, if you will. So um, moving on to thinking about the roadmap with respect to fixing credit report, and again, emphasizing the importance of it from a borrowing capacity or otherwise. Um, so what is a credit report? Uh, some people will ask. So over there, we've got it here on the screen. Um, think of it as like a credit bureau, as a collator of data, that every time you make an inquiry, it determines your ability to not only borrow money, but it gives a bit of your indication of your financial health, as I call it. So you like to go get a blood test for your own personal health, keeping your credit report health in check. I liken it as much as making sure that you're, you've got some uh, good personal health going on. Um, at the same time, a credit file is in relation to comprehensive credit reporting. So what this is, is pretty much from 2018, legislation came through that makes it an open banking system. So for example, if you lodge a deal with a Australian lender like Westpac, they'll be able to see it if you've gone to NAB or something of that range. So all the information is now shared all between the lenders, creating additional transparency, but of course crazy, causing more issue uh, for investors out there or people that want to get their foot into the property market or even just want to consolidate debt because information too much can sometimes lead to more likelihood of errors occurring. So how to read a credit report? There are a plethora of headings on a credit report, which we'll see in a moment, but basically on the screen you'll see that there are some adverse entries that we call it, such as default, so we'll look at what that means exactly. Um, and you've got some other information there um, that may not necessarily be adverse. For example, accounts that you've had. So if you've had a credit card and you've closed it, that would be showing there if it's an open account that you've got, for example, you've bought a laptop and you're connected with GE or something of that nature. So that's basically a, a plethora of information that's going to be recorded on your credit report. So you wanna make sure that information is accurate uh, to put you in the best position moving forward with a creditor. Um, and of course now from the 1st of July uh, 2022, financial hardship will also be communicated on a separate slide on the comprehensive credit report. Uh, so if you do enter into hardship um, applications with your current lender because you're falling back on your mortgage repayments, that will now be encaptured separately um, as of the new financial year that we're in. Um, now, there are three main credit bureaus. Obviously, Equifax is the main one, player in Australia. And then we have Ilion, and then we have Equifax. Apart from Equifax, uh, obviously Conrad touched about the importance of making sure that you keep on top of it and how to uh, order those credit reports and any inquiries that you get, Equifax will send you an alert. But that being said, your Ilion from an investment point of view, if you're a, particularly if you're a business owner and you're a director, a lot of trade suppliers, um, every year they'll just automatically do an inquiry on you because you one time you signed an authority five years ago and they'll continue using the same one. Um, that's something else we'll look at. But in essence, an Ilion credit report um, can also have some information. So when you apply to an Australian lender for a loan, they will check two out of the three credit reports as a minimum. Um, bit of a scenario here to show for example, we get people that come and go, they think their credit score is good because they've gone to the Equifax and they've looked at it or they've looked at a third party online and they believe their credit health is in good check. So here we've got, let's call him client A, pretty good up in the green, up in the uh, almost the 800, 793. So pretty much where you want to be to be able to 
uh, make yourself a prime candidate for a lower interest loan, if you will. Um, and then on this angle, we have commercial report B. So same person, but different credit score. Um, I'll go slightly back to the other slide. You'll notice that in the top left of the screen for me, um, it's got, it says consumer report. So uh, this is actually a live example that was showing that someone who applied for a loan, they thought their credit report was good and then it turned out to be not what they thought. Um, so then when the deal was lodged uh, with the lender that they were looking for, uh, this is the report that the bank got, okay? So what's happened is the credit score has slightly gone down, um, but more importantly for now, uh, the type of report audit here is the consumer and commercial report. So this is the report that we encourage you um, to order, especially if you're a business owner or you've got past directorships or you're a shareholder of an entity. Um, so then a bit of a snapshot there between the difference between the two. So if you recall the heading that we had beforehand, uh, shows what's going on in this case. So the client had 34 inquiries all, all around. Um, business relationships, so they had been part of a biz five businesses or a director or a shareholder um, or current. And then you'll see that the credit score is quite different and that can adversely affect one when they come to borrow um, money. So let's unpack that a little bit more to determine which one is the true correct score. So how do we find the true and correct score? So if you own a business, the business, as you know, is an entity of itself, just like a person is, is, is considered an entity under consumer laws. Therefore, that company will also have its own credit report. So this is where to order a company report. Um, Equifax Swift Checks, that's the main place to order them. And you put in your details and your credentials there. Uh, I'm not too sure if you can get these like you did a personal inquiry where every month they'll send you an alert. So it's good to check these ones. But again, here's a bit of a snapshot with regards to, if you recall, the report and report B that we have the differences. You'll notice there that in this particular occasion, um, this person had all the directorships recorded against them. Um, and this is what the bank will look at. So this is the information that the bank will assess or the credit team within the bank to determine whether your loan application should be approved. They'll get all this information and then they'll make that assessment um, given the fact that they have the discretion to do so. Um, so again, make sure you do your own due diligence before you lodge that credit um, application. Um, so in this particular person, so in the credit report B, once they came to us, we investigated further and then we realized why their credit report was lower than what they originally thought. So this particular person ended up having a judgment listed on their credit report. Um, we were able to obviously rectify it, analyze it to be able, if we, if we could remove the, the judgment, we were successful um, and we do an upfront analysis to make sure that we can before we commence. Um, but again, at the same time, this person also had uh, two ex external uh, companies. So what had happened is he, this person had sold two businesses, but then those businesses went into external administration. That information would unfortunately still come up on the person's credit report that sold the business. Then again, they come to us to see what we can do to make the explanation to be able to them be able to move forward with their lives. Um, so again, unpacking it there, bit of a synopsis is about em emphasizing the same person, but two different sets of information and which one is the uh, correct one. So take home message, guys, make sure you order the company reports or as a minimum, the consumer and commercial reports, not just the consumer in isolation. Um, in this case, this person had a default and a judgment. We're able to remove those, um, make the client's credit worthiness increase dramatically and get that loan that they were looking for. Uh, take home message again there. So obtain your Equifax credit report for a company, um, order the person consumer one, and of course, order your Ilion report. Now, if there's unsure, uncertain how you can order these reports, let us know and we can help you out to get them for you. Um, again, the biggest thing when it comes to a property investor especially is time, being able to move on into the market, take advantage of those situations. Um, don't wait 30 days to get a uh, report, guys. Um, under Australian law now, um, the last treasurer allowed for not just one credit report to be ordered for free for every year, but actually three per year. So take advantage of that. Make sure you check everything before you lodge any applications. But of course, if, if time is super of the essence, we're here via our own portals to get you the reports quick smart. Um, here's another example that we're sharing. So the difference between, I guess, inquiries versus default listings. So 
as a property investor or a business owner, you might have a lot of inquiries uh, on your credit report. So in this particular case, the person had 30 odd, I, I believe, yeah, 31 odd you know, credit inquiries, but they've had no default. So uh, they've done the right thing by their creditors. They've always paid on time. They haven't missed anything. Um, but of course, something's happened beyond their collective control, perhaps with supplies that have done inquiries on the, on the report unbeknown to them. Um, a little bit about comprehensive credit reporting. So late repayment history. This is a legend uh, you guys can always use. Uh, I encourage you to even make a copy of this for yourselves. So if you're late on repayments with a lender, what are the uh, ramifications that it has? So the later that you are with the, your repayment of your loan, whether it be car loan, home loan, or credit card, or whatever it is, uh, the worse it puts you as far as a credit risk in the eyes of the potential lenders that you want to be able to unlock some of your capital or equity through potentially. Um, so we've had a lot of scenarios, especially post-COVID, that their information has not been recorded correctly. Um, it could be something as simple as a direct debit account, um, finishing no funds in there um, to that not being recorded and in the information there, or it could be a life event, something's happened as far as hardship, or, um, and then that information has or has not been communicated. Either way, the information will be recorded uh, most often they're not adversely on the person, affecting them to be able to go on. Um, this is a very big thing. So what we're noticing, guys, is actually late repayment of loans in any facility or credit facility is having more of an impact than a default that might be two or three years older. We think that's to do with the fact that it's more recent. So the more recent your late repayment history, the more of an effect that has your credit score and on your credit worthiness. Um, so quickly unpacking one situation regarding the comprehensive credit reporting. Uh, we've had someone, and I should probably mention that this is not just a low socioeconomic thing, guys. This happens to everyone across the board. This is an example of a husband and wife. They're actually two doctors. They've got in, purchased an investment property, signed a contract uh, for unconditional at an auction. Um, then basically they've lodged their credit reports um, and then the banks come back and decline them because their credit scores uh, were a little bit inferior. Then they came to us. Um, mind you, keep in, keep in thought that they've paid a deposit. They might be at risk of losing the deposit if they can't go, go through with this transaction and purchase that property. Uh, we've analyzed that. Now you'll notice that it's basically four months of late repayment. So what happened in this example is the client had entered into a hardship arrangement uh, for about four to five months and for interest only. And then it's gone back to property, uh, sorry, principal and interest repayments. Uh, but they didn't recall that that was happening. So they were making the interest repayments, but not the full payment that was owed. And hence that late repayment history highlighted over there. Uh, we got to work, we analyzed it, we dealt with the in-house legal team of the particular creditor, um, Australian lender. We were able to be able to rectify the issue for them. Um, and this is an example about how much of a dramatic effect comprehensive quarter reporting or late repayments is having on one. Um, the, the reason for the different loan amount at the bottom is because they refinanced, hence the different loan, uh, loan account. But more importantly, you'll notice that where on the previous screen, there was some late repayment history for twos. In other words, they were late for over 30 days. That's gone. Clients were able to buy the property. Um, the, the broker was very happy to be able to assist the clients. They were very appreciative of them. And we're just happy for the fact that the clients were able to um, do what they on, uh, initially set out, that is to become property investors. Um, another example here, the difference between when you order a free credit report, guys, and the comprehensive credit report. So you'll see a lot online with a difference to different credit reports that one orders. Um, always go for the comprehensive run. Um, that shows the true one. That's the one, again, that the banks look at. So just briefly, a couple tips for the investors that are going forward looking to enter into that investment market or increase their portfolio. If an inquiry is made on the credit report, that has a impact on your credit report. So make sure you check your ability um, with your banker or your mortgage broker to make sure that you're able to apply for a loan before you click on that pre-approval because every inquiry recorded against you will have an impact on your credit report. Um, check the Ilion, Experian and Equifax credit reports as we've mentioned. Um, and when refinancing or consolidating debts, um, consider closing some accounts. So um, it's very important to have some information on your credit history. The more accounts sometimes people have is a misconception that their credit uh, score will be better. It's a bit of a fallacy. Yes, it's good to have one or two open accounts, but if an account can be closed, it's better to close it.
All right, guys. So now we're going to quickly go breeze through some before and after. So the impacts that uh, adverse items have on a credit report and what is it that happens and what we do to be able to help clients rectify those uh, issues. So again, this is a same example of before that we just shared with late repayment history. A uh, big difference there with the guy with respect to the credit report. So that's the one that we just unpacked moments ago. Again, comprehensive credit reporting um, is a very big thing. Make sure you stay on top of all your payments on time. Um, if you're doing things via BPAY, make sure that, for example, the BPAY is done well in advance of the one the repayment is necessarily done because uh, it takes two or three to go, to go through and then you don't get caught with um, unnecessarily late repayments being recorded against you, for example. Uh, so again, if you've got late repayment history, let us know, run your scenario past us and we'll see what we can do. Um, this is another big one that we just said, particularly for people that who are business owners or they have a lot of inquiries recorded against them. Make sure that basically any inquiries that are recorded on you are true and correct. We'll be able to analyze that. Sometimes when you go shopping online for cheaper rates, unbeknown to you, you're ticking boxes and um, giving your consent. Um, that consent is more implied. So as a solicitor, we know the legislation acts where the creditors need to do things correctly. So again, if you've got too many inquiries, think of us, let's see what we can do for you. In this situation, uh, we had a client we removed, so there's 31 there, 27. So we analyzed it with the client. We removed four credit reports. And guys, you can see how much of a, a bigger impact it's having. A lot of lenders have this 600 plus mentality where you need your score to be over 600. You could have all the deposits saved. You could be on very good income. But again, if your credit score is low, it could de- uh, dramatically affect you and to your detriment. Um, this is another one that we're going to be looking at. Unfortunately, identity fraud is very real. It's happening. It's no longer someone stealing your uh, wallet at the beach and using your information. Cybercrime is real. Uh, we've all seen the news articles coming up daily with respect to these things. This is, I guess, the side that you don't see, the ramification that has to one's life and being able to move forward. Um, this particular example we, we showed is a client actually had a default. Uh, so some fraudsters used their information to order some devices. Um, that company that did the credit check ran through it with them. And then when they came to, for example, buy a property, this particular person realized they had a default on there. We analyze it. We saw that we can help. We rectified it quick smart. And then you can see the credit score, how much it's jumped uh, because of that uh, not needing to be on there because that default was um, not correct. One quick last example here is a where sometimes we might take you on a little bit of a a journey. So you come to us, uh, the credit score is low in this particular example. So we analyze it with the client to make sure that there are grounds for the removal of the defaults. And that could be anything, guys. So just always worth having a conversation with us as a solicitor experience in this field. We were able to then see that, yes, there were grounds for the removal. We got the two defaults removed for the clients. We ordered a new credit report. The defaults were gone, but the credit score hadn't gone up. So then that's where there's a conversation additionally with their mortgage broker at that, at that case to say some more work had to be done in the report to bring it to this best status. Therefore, then we looked at what inquiries could be removed and then we're able to remove a few more. And then the last uh, slide there, you can see that it's actually uh, the credit report was much, much better. So I'm showing this as an example of the difference between credit worthiness and credit school. Okay, so the defaults were removed, but the score was low. Or we might have clients that have got a score of 900, but they've got defaults, so they don't fit the lender's policy. Overall, it's the best interest to make your credit report overall health as best as you can, uh, squeaky clean, if you will, to be able to move forward um, and put your best foot forward with any potential uh, creditors or lenders in the future. Um, obviously, I'm very passionate about what we do, so is the team, but... It is life-changing, guys. Um, The clients that have come to us, they weren't able to move on with their lives, and then they could um, from whether it was buying their first home or to be able to just make sure everything is healthy, to uh, take advantage of some opportunities out there, uh, property investment or otherwise. Uh, So we're very passionate, and we always look for that smile at the end and that appreciation the client has, and honestly, that's that makes our day. Um, here's a bit of a breakdown with regards to our services and what we do. So whether a default is paid or unpaid, I think that's important to emphasize. So sometimes creditors will use a bit of language that says if you pay a default, 
they think it's going to be uh, removed. Unfortunately, that's not the case. If they, if you pay default, the status will be updated to paid on the credit report, but it still remained on your, your, your credit report. So we specialize in the removal of paid or unpaid. Um, court judgments, uh, by the way, our services are Australia wide. So because of that, we, we can do with all courts and jurisdictions around Australia. So if you've got a judgment listed against you, feel free to raise it with us. We can do an upfront analysis to determine what can happen and to see if it can be removed. Commercial defaults is another one um, that comes up. So the threshold with what a creditor has to do with a commercial default, threshold is much, much lower than a personal default. So again, um, let us know. We'll, we'll run the scenario past you. As you explain us your situation, we're able then to uh, calculate knowing the law and the codes and the legislation and the case law, whether it can be removed or not. Late repayment history is the one that we talked about regarding the comprehensive credit reporting. Um, so again, we shared some examples there. Guys, if you've got larger debts that's connected to a default or an adverse entry like a judgment, we will do what we can for you at no extra cost to negotiate down that debt to help you be able to move on. So it's very important that it's not just about the debt lowering, it's about getting the adverse entry removed to be able to move on. Um, identity fraud we've touched on, and this is another one, watch this space guys, with regards to buy now, pay later uh, um, coming up on credit reports. So uh, Afterpay has voluntarily said that they're happy to engage into comprehensive credit reporting. In other words, if you're late on your Afterpay repayments fortnightly or monthly in the near future, it is likely to affect your credit report as well. So keep on top of those. Um, again, with regards to frauds, uh, there's a bit of statistics there. How much is affecting Australians? You need to get a, you need to get a front of that quick smart. That, so to not only to get any items removed that shouldn't be there, but also to minimize um, the issues that are likely to continue to occur. So we'll help you stem, stem the bleeding, if you will, to make sure we can continue working on it and no other issues come up after that. Um, again, the benefits with us when we move forward for clients, um, we provide obviously no obligation upfront analysis, um, fixed price. So because of that, uh, we are very competitive uh, with regards to our pricing and you get the benefit of a experienced solicitor to work on your matter from start to finish as one point of contact. Uh, we do have payment plans. We understand everyone uh, might be doing it tough weather now and they've got situations, certain situations. So we'll work through to accommodate where we can. You don't need to chase us. We will update you and your financial representative if you request every week to let you know where it's up to. Um, so then that way, once we've got, once we've, uh, I guess, accomplished the goal of making the credit report as best as, as best as possible, as we're ordering that last credit report to be clear to send to you, your financial representative can touch base with you and start collecting any other data, pay slips or whatever to be able to lodge your loan as soon as possible. Um, and of course, we try to our best to make you loan ready uh, for your finance representative to be able to take you forward in that regards. A um, little bit of, again, us. Now, with respect to the industry, guys, it is important to make sure that your specialist that's assisting you with your uh, credit report has all the necessary um, qualifications and licenses in place. We are at a higher threshold given the fact that we are gold standard members of the Law Society. Uh, we have trust account. We have a lot of other things that we have to comply with that we do, of course. Um, and at the same time, um, we are big sponsors of uh, finance representatives out there. So they use us Australia-wide uh, mortgage brokers regarding their client situations. Um, thank you again um, for allowing us to present today. Uh, I hope that information helped. I understand there was a lot of information to take in. But again, it, you need to know as much as you can regarding your credit report. Our information is uh, available over there. Feel free to contact me directly if you need to um, or follow us on any of our social media platforms with up-to-date information. Um, Conrad, thank you again for being able to allow us to present uh, to your wonderful audience um, and hopefully they find it beneficial. Thank you. Thank you, Pasha. Thank you for spending and giving up your valuable time today to come into our office and share this invaluable information with our clients. And there's, there was some amazing, uh, you know, nuggets of wisdom in there, guys. So you might want to listen to this presentation a couple of times. What I want to highlight to you is number one is if you think fixing a credit file is expensive, try paying a 30 year loan over 30 years with penalized interest or paying an extra premium on your lender's mortgage insurance or risk fee. 
you know, that's virtually double the price what everyone else is paying. So once again, this is something you have to be aware of, number one. Number two, I encourage everyone that was listening to this video to get a copy of your credit file. You, you know, subscribe to Equifax, make sure you're aware of it, make sure you get your, if you're serious about investing, you should be on my credit alert, which means anytime anyone touches your credit file, you get that page emailed to you in a PDF document, and you get notified. If it's not you, this is the kind of company you should be contacting immediately to check and see what's happened on your credit file. We've had situations before, guys, where, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm the only Conrad Bobby Lake in Australia, but if your name is John Smith, um, there could be errors. People could be, you know, you could be buying a plasma screen at Harvey Norman that could basically open up the wrong credit file and, and then you're paying for it. So you got to make sure that if you've got a, a common name or a popular name, I should say, especially, um, then you're, you're on top of things. And also just get in contact with them if you feel that you, your credit score is not where you want it to be, or if you see any credit infringements on your credit file, if you've been late and behind with loans, telco bills, and you're serious about investing in property, this is the number one thing I'll be doing with getting market ready because ultimately interest rates are going up. And if you can save yourself 1% or half a percent or, you know, um, risk fee or LMI premiums, it could be tens of thousands of dollars over the period of, of you know, a decade or so. So once again, um, you've got all the contact details there. We're going to leave some contact details just below this video as well with links to the company and their telephone number. If you want to set up a free, no obligation a consultation with them to do a review and do a health check of your credit file, be in contact with uh, CRS lawyers. Thank you, Pasha, for coming in. And this is it, guys. This is Conrad Bobilek signing out. I'll see you on the inside.